Welcome to the fourth class of this fresh start in 3D modeling with special focus on products. In previous classes, here's what we have covered. In class one, we learned some fundamentals about 3D design. We went through the Blender interface. We learned some important modeling tools and we understood how subdivisions work. In class two, we learned how to model 3D products, starting with cylinders as our primitives. We also practiced by modeling four different products with their detailed covers. In class 3, we learned how to create holes and extrude new shapes from an existing mesh. In this class, we will learn how to model a complete kettle by applying lessons we've learned from previous classes. There are several ways you can take part in this series and also support the series and the channel at large. First, you can kindly subscribe to the channel to get more classes and to get notified for subsequent series and 3D content. And you can also join my 3D community on Telegram for more conversations, tips, challenges, resource sharing, and growth opportunities. Then you can also grab the Fresh Start bundle of clay image references. It consists of over 25 clay product references to help you practice and model more products after you take part in this training. Also, if you're into NFTs, you can patronize my Vogbot NFT project on OpenSea that has a crazy utility where I create a free animated fashion NFT for every piece sold. So I'll divide my viewport here, go to the top right corner and left click and drag. Then I'll change this view here to my front view by hitting one on my numpad or I can go to view here and then under viewpoint I can select front. Or you can use your grave ascent key. And I'll hit shift A on my keyboard to bring in the image reference for the kettle. So on that image, I'll select background and I'll go to where my reference is saved and I will load this kettle. So here, before I do anything, I want to select this image reference and just take it above the grid line here. So I'll go to the image properties and then offset Y. I'll just increase this and drop it here. So now I'll bring a cylinder in to shape around this reference. So I'll hit shift A, I'll get the cylinder and then I'll change the shading mode here first to wireframe. Then under the options here, let's zoom in to see what will be enough for us. Now this extrusion here is the key area we want to take note of. So this will be done on the x-axis here, so at this area. So I will want to reduce this until I know I can extrude the circle at this area perfectly. So I think 22 vertices is okay for me. I'll just rotate this cylinder so it matches with the x-axis here. So I'll do my checks to make sure I'm working in the right perspective. So if I click this here, this is facing here. So that means this is the right perspective for me to work with. So now we can go over here and shape this cylinder to match the reference. Now here, this is fine for me to start with. So I can go to my edit mode and then in my face mode, I can select this face here and I'll go to my move tool. Then we can start extruding this and scaling this appropriately. So I'll extrude this once here and I'll place it this way. I'll extrude this again up here and I'll just scale that in a little bit. And I'll extrude this up here, I'll scale that in a little bit. Extrude this here, I'll scale that in. And I can make one more extrusion at this point and also scale that in a little bit. So now I should have the base mesh for my kettle. So let's continue modeling before we come to create this detail here. So instead of creating a new cylinder, I just want to continue the detail for this cover with this face here, but I want to make it another object. So if I right click here, I can split this. And then if I hit P on my keyboard, I can separate this by loose parts. So that will create another object for me. So if I go to my object mode, I can select this new cylinder here. I can go to my edit mode and then in my face mode, I'll select these faces. I'll just take this in a little bit and then I'll also scale it inwards a little bit, just a little. Then I can start extruding this upwards a little, then scale it inwards and extrude again, scale it outwards. Remember, I'm using S to scale, but you can also use your scale tool here. And I'll extrude this again, I'll scale it inwards. Maybe we can bring that down and scale it outwards again. Then we can use the same technique to create this handle. But here, what I want to do is I'll just poke these faces so that I can connect these points for me. So I'll right click and then I'll hit poke faces. So that will connect the points properly for me here. 
Then again, I can right click and then split or I can hit Y on my keyboard. And then I'll hit P to separate this by loose parts. And so I can go to my object mode and I can select this new cylinder here. So let's rename this so that we don't get confused. So let's call this cover one. Let's call this cover handle. And let's call this kettle body. Then we can rename this image reference. So here with cover handle, let's go to the face mode, select all the faces, and then we can also start extruding again. So now we've created the body of this kettle. So let's quickly create this detail. So if I go to the kettle body in my object mode, and then I switch to the edit mode of that. So if I'm to use one of the techniques we learned earlier, I'll use the one where I bevel the point because I have enough space to create a circle here with bevel points. So I just create that point for myself by creating another loop cut around this area. So in my edge mode, I hit Ctrl R, and then I'll just place a cut at the center here. So I'll go to our points mode and I'll select this point. So be sure you are working properly with this perspective. Then I'll go to my bevel tool. And I'll make sure this is at vertices. Then we can just bevel this now and then we'll edit it in real time. So if I drop this, this is not the shape I want. So let's just drag this this way. Then I'll bring these options up. Another width type, I'll change this to percent. And then I'll just drag this width percent up this way. Then I'll change the segments to 2 and I'll change the shape here to 0 0.1. And that should give me this shape for my circle. And now I'll join these points for good topology. So I'll select these two points, I'll hit J. Then select this other point and join them with J. Next, I'll slide this point away from this circle so that it helps the circle flow properly. So I'll select this point and I'll hit G twice on my keyboard. So if I hit G and G again, it will bring my slide to, and then I'll just slide it on this edge. Then I'll do that for this area also. I'll slide it away this way. And I'll also do that here, slide it this way. So now I can select these faces. So now before we flatten these faces up, let's extrude it a little bit. So if I hit E on my keyboard, and I just drag this out like this, here's what I'll have. So I want to flatten these faces now on the x-axis. So I'll scale it to 0 0.0 to flatten it out. So I'll hit S, then X, and I'll hit 0 on my keyboard. And that will flatten it out on the x-axis. So now we can start extruding here and direct our new shape around this extension here. So I'll scale this a little bit. I'll drag this here. Then I'll rotate this a little. And I'll extrude this again. And I can use G to grab this to place it where I want, I can rotate it with R and I can scale it with S. So this is the process I'll keep repeating. So now I have this kettle extension and I can just get rid of these faces here. For now, let's hide these covers so we can see the inside of the kettle. So the next thing I can do for this kettle is just to extrude the faces to make it thick. So I hit A on my keyboard and then I right click and extrude faces along normals. I can either take this outwards or take this inwards. So I'll take it inwards this way. So here I'll just add some supporting edges so that when I subdivide this, this will look nice. So if we add a subdivision surface now, and then we change the shading mode to smooth. This is what we should have so there's no defined corner here. So let's go to our edit mode, I'll hit Ctrl R, and I'll add a loop cut here. And let's increase the levels of our subdivision to 2. So I'll do the same here. Hit Ctrl R. But for this particular edge, I will scale it out a little bit so I have an interesting detail here. And I can hit Ctrl R here. And I'll drop this around this area. And then if I bring my subdivision surface back on and I go to my object mode, this is what I should have. So let's put our covers back on and also give them subdivision surfaces.
and I'll change the shading to smooth. For this first cover, the top will be better when it's closed. So I'll go to our edit mode, I'll select this loop, I'll hit F to fill it, and then I'll right click and poke the faces. So let's just fine tune the cover a little bit. So I'll go to my edit mode, and I'll add a loop cut at the base here. And I want to drag this cover handle now, because we took it from this object, the origin is still set at the original kettle. So let's just right click and then set the origin to geometry. Then I'll move this down to touch the first cover. So this is how the body of the kettle should look. So now we'll simply use cylinders to create the handle of this kettle. So I'll hit shift A and I'll bring a cylinder in. So here I can work with 12 vertices or 8. But for more control, let's just work with 8. And I'll scale and move this to this point to act as my starting point. Now note that I'm still scaling it together, so I'm not scaling it on a particular axis. I'm only moving it on a particular axis, but I'm using S to scale this down all together. So I can scale it to this point. So I'll go to my edit mode. If you forget to add triangle fan when you're adding your cylinder at first, you can just right click and poke the faces and then it will help you connect that area like a triangle fan. So I'll right click here also and poke the faces. So we can start shaping around this handle now. So I'll extrude, I'll hit G, I'll rotate it, and I'll scale it a little bit. And I'll repeat that process. Then for this area here, don't try to shape around this handle. It will extrude this separately and shape it on its own. So just shape within. So I'll drop that here for now, then later I can come back to shape it. So let's go to this other area here. Select these faces. You can continue shaping this to match the reference. And when you're done, add a subdivision surface modifier and then change the shading to smooth. And if you're not still satisfied with the shape, you can continue making adjustments till you get what you want. So now let's just separate some of these faces at the top to create the top of the handle here. I'll go to my face mode and I'll select these loops here. And I'll hit Shift D to duplicate. I won't move it. Then I'll hit P and I'll separate this by loose part. So that should create a new object for me here. So if I go to my object mode, I can select the new object we have here. So let's just call this handle top. And we can name this handle. For now, we can hide the handle so that we see only this properly. As you can see, because we split this, it doesn't have any cap, so we'll fill that later. Let's just shape this in. So I'll go to my edge mode and then I'll select all the edges that are here and I'll hit S to scale that. And I'll do same here. I'll hit S to scale that. I'll hit G to grab it and place it in position. So let's just fill these edges. So here with all these edges selected, I'll hit F to fill that. Then I'll go to my face mode, then I'll right click to poke the faces. I hold shift alt to select this loop. I'll hit F to fill it. I'll go to my face mode, I'll right click and then I'll poke the faces also. So here I'll just insert these faces. I'll hit I and I'll insert this face so that I create some supporting edges there. I'll do that here also. And I'll just create supporting edges by adding a loop cut here, Ctrl R, and adding another loop cut here with Ctrl R. So let's put the subdivision surface modifier on to see what we have. I'll go to my object mode and I'll change the shading to smooth. So this is the handle we should have here. But I still want this area to be more pronounced. So I'll go to my edit mode and in edge mode, I'll select this loop here and then I'll just kill this more. 
so now i can bring my handle back on and so we want to just move this down a little bit so the origin is set here because of the handle so let's just right click set origin to the geometry and we can just simply change the orientation to global then i'll move this down so one last detail is to take care of the base of this mesh so let's select the kettle body and in edit mode our face mode i'll select the faces here i'll right click and i'll poke the faces and i'll hit i and then i'll just insert the face this way and then i can just insert the face again this way just for some supporting edges so now we can go to our object mode and then look at this this should be flat in there so this is what we should have thank you for joining this class in our next class we'll learn how to model from flat surfaces and we'll also learn how to use symmetry or mirror tools and we'll be modeling this headset for practice so ensure you subscribe and remember you can support this initiative by grabbing the product reference bundle in the description below and you can also support by getting a Vogue nft on OpenSea, where you also get a free animated fashion nft for every piece bought all this information can be found in the description below.